डियर स्टूडेंट्स असलम वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन टीचिंग ऑफ एसोसिएट डिग्री प्रोग्राम फॉर सेकेंड सेमेस्टर दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर फोर इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट योर कोर्स हैज एंड इट इज पार्ट ऑफ रिटर्न कम्युनिकेशन सो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट पैराग्राफ राइटिंग द सीक्वेंस ऑफ स्लाइड्स फॉर टूडेज lecture will be i will tell you that what is structural or grammatical hierarchy of language what is a paragraph what is the structure organization or parts of a paragraph these are the same things structure organization or parts of a paragraph what are the elements of a paragraph and what are the types of a paragraph so we are going to cover these five things in today's lecture so first i will tell you what is the structural or grammatical hierarchy of language now there are two terms uh, that i am going to explain the first one is uh, what is grammatical and what does the word hierarchy mean and together what both these terms they mean right so as we see that grammar is the structural system of a language so grammar means rules grammar means what the language is made up of how the words are made how sentences are made so this is what all grammar tells us right now we get to the grammar of english language it is organized into five ranks in a hierarchical manner now what is a hierarchy hierarchy means the system of some something the system of anything which goes from bottom to top from lowest order to highest order see so from you can say uh, uh, junior to senior from less important to most important from first step to the last step so all this it comes in a certain pattern in a certain sequence and we call this hierarchy and uh, hierarchical is an adjective which means that if something is arranged in such a manner we call it hierarchy all right so let's get to the hierarchy or uh, you can say the structural grammatical hierarchy of english language and if you are going to see there's a diagram to your right side here we can see that if you follow the numbers uh, the first thing that the english language it has uh, as far as uh, the structural system of a language is concerned it is called the morpheme now what is a morpheme morpheme is actually the smallest unit of meaning that a word can be divided into let me repeat the morpheme is the smallest unit of meaning that a word can be divided into let me give you an example if there is a word like l i k e so it means that it has one morpheme in it but if we say unlikely unlikely so we can divide it into three parts and it will be called uh, it will be uh, uh, we call it as having three morphemes see unlike li so it means that this word grammar the grammar of word like in simple way what is the morpheme it is the grammar of a word how the words they are made up of uh, what is the structure of words uh, how uh, many parts uh, a word has so all this is concerned with the branch of linguistics or you can say grammar which we call morphology in which we study morphemes all right enough so from parts of word we get to the word itself 
it means that from parts of uh, words we get to the word then those words combine i mean when the parts combine they make up a word when the words combine they make up the phrase when the phrase combine it makes up the clause and when the clauses are combined um, most of the times if there is uh, there are two clauses three clauses then they make up one sentence so in your previous semester you people have gone through uh, uh, the phrase the clause and what is the sentence so now this is the continuation of the same and we are going to go ahead okay so in terms of hierarchy we see that morpheme comes at the lowest or it is the one which comes at number 1 uh and it is at the bottom and when the parts of the word they combine they go up 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 and number 5 is going to become the highest in this grammatical hierarchy so together we call these structural or grammatical hierarchy of english language i give you an example of the same hierarchy uh if there is a sentence like this these undergraduates are rapidly improving in their writing now if there is a sentence like this it does not mean that this is just a sentence look at the parts we are going to start from the parts of speech now when we look at this um, even before parts of speech let me tell you that each word has something that is written in a different color for example in undergraduates under is in red color s uh, it is in blue color ly in rapidly is in blue color ing in improving is in blue color and ing is in blue color now all these uh, are called like these different colors other than the black they are the uh, parts of a word means they are morphemes you know uh for example here under is a morpheme with graduate graduate is the main word but under makes it a kind of a prefix then we use s morpheme over here to add plurality in it it becomes a plural then you see rapid and ly we see that the main or the root word is rapid but ly makes it a different part of speech then improve and ing and then write and ing so when we do something to the word either we add something before it after it uh, so it becomes a morpheme see so look at this it has we start from number 1 that is morphemes these are morphemes in different colors then we get to uh, the words that what are these words now we get to the parts of speech now we are actually uh, doing the structure of a sentence that sentence goes through different uh, it is made up of different parts um, and it has different levels also so if you look at this one these these is a determiner like in the modern grammar i had told you back in the initial lectures of uh, semester 1 that what are the new parts of speech so in that this is the determiner these now undergraduates all together it is a noun are it is auxiliary verb rapidly is adverb improving is main verb preposition it is in again there comes determiner there like in old parts of speech this is called a uh, possessive pronoun or possessive adjective but in the modern parts of speech it is it is called determiner and again there comes noun see now uh, it does not mean that it has ended there let's get to the next step sorry we need to go up all right now uh, from morphemes we get we uh, we went to the analysis of uh, of single word now we get to the group of words now they become phrases for example these undergraduates now together this will be noun phrase are rapidly improving now these three are verb phrase whereas in their writing together this it will become prepositional phrase you see the more we go higher 
uh, the more the words that uh, they are going to be joined together you see so initially we were looking at uh, each word and trying to separate it and trying to get the morphemes then we joined the words uh, these morphemes and we got to know one word then from the combination of words we went to the phrase uh, then from phrase uh, we get to know that uh, this is all of it all of this these undergraduates are rapidly improving in their writing this is a clause see this is one clause and it is also a simple sentence because it gives us the independent uh, idea means that it is complete in all respect a sentence may have one two three four um, and so on so many clauses but here this is not only a clause but also a sentence so this is the structural or grammatical hierarchy uh, of english grammar which i have shown you through one example here let's move ahead now now we get to some bigger thing apart from just a sentence let's get to something else which is today's topic and that is what is a paragraph now i give you one example i start i go i'm going to start from it now if you just read it that i don't like tests every time i take a test i feel nervous when i study for a test i don't know if i will be able to get a good grade often i worry about taking a test and can't sleep sometimes i day dream or draw pictures in class after the test is over i worry about my grade when my teacher gives the test back to me with a grade i still can't relax because i know i'll have another test soon tests give me a lot of stress that is why i don't like tests so you might have noticed over here that they are in sentences i mean the first sentence finishes here the other here like you have to look at the end of every uh, like most of the times we have full stops the sentence starts from the capital letter and ends at full stop and then you see it carry on it carry on carry on carries on carries on and then we get to see that it is the last uh, sentence that is going to be uh, that that is going to finish at again tests um now this is a whole paragraph you will see that there is no um, blank space left it is a continuation of the same thought so what we are going to see is that a paragraph is a group of it is a group of related sentences means they all are interrelated uh, they are not the separate sentence in the sense that one talks about tests the other talks about mobile phone no they all are interrelated and continue with one main idea so the whatever is in red color that's going to be very important okay um the paragraph a paragraph is the basic unit of thought so the thought when it comes out and when the writers or when uh, whosoever wants to write something uh, this paragraph is the basic unit of thought this is where we write uh, different um, stories like the, uh, the story has uh, if you just read the stories it has different paragraphs they make up um, uh, the story uh, then we have different other uh, examples which i will give you for example Uh, a paragraph can have this single unit also i mean that there can be just one paragraph and it is complete uh, but it can be part of a longer composition also for example we have essay now essay has a combination of paragraphs group of paragraphs right now paragraph is basically the mostly the group of sentences interrelated sentences now when you read short story there you see that there are different paragraphs combined together uh, there is novel when you read novels also have the paragraphs in them uh, then newspaper reports if you read them they are paragraphs articles that you read in again in newspaper reports articles or uh, any research articles that you read so you see they will have uh, dif different paragraphs in them and together they will make up one whole thing so it means 
uh, that when we talk about a paragraph, a paragraph means one paragraph. So it will any paragraph that you write, it does not have any empty line and empty space in it. Uh, it goes in continuation. An idea is always one. Hey, so this is what I told you over here. Right. In one way or the other, it is a miniature essay. Miniature essay means that in the small form, uh, you can call it an essay. Why essay? Because essay has three parts and paragraph also has three parts, which I'm going to explain in the next slide. Now, we are going to look at the structure or organization or parts of a paragraph. First, let me give you this example to the right side. And if you can see this image, uh, what does the word organization mean? Or as a verb, it is organize. Uh, when we say organize, what comes to our mind is that uh, we have to put things in a certain order. For example, if there is uh, uh, some messy desk, means that if your writing desk has things spread here and there, they are not in order, it means it is not organized. But if your mother says that arrange your desk, arrange your cupboard, arrange your ward wardrobe, arrange your room, then it means that you have to keep everything place everything in a, in an organized or in a systematic manner that you can find the things in a comfortable way uh, from uh, different, uh, you can say, uh, places that you have fixed. So if it is your wardrobe, then you, we will see that you have the clothes uh, hanging uh, at a, a special place, at, a, at an exclusive place. Then there are going to be uh, the other clothes or then your shoes or so many things. So it, in the same manner, a paragraph is not just uh, the group of sentences. It's not like that. It is their arrangement. And that arrangement, uh, with the help of this example, you can see that now the same paragraph that I had given you earlier as an example, uh, now I have given them different uh, colors. Now, each color stands for something. Now, I have told you. Now, the paragraph has three main parts. One is topic sentence. Topic sentence means the main idea, the main or controlling idea around which the whole paragraph revolves. Okay. Then supporting details. Of course, you have to give then different examples or argument in favor of the controlling idea. And finally, you have to sum up what is the controlling idea. See, so that is called concluding or closing sentence. Now look at a red color. I don't like tests. Now look, this is the main thought. Now the writer is talking about his or her never liking tests at all. Okay. Rest of the lines, all these green lines, they are the examples or arguments or proof that he does not like tests. Then we get to the last line, which is just like we say is equal to, means concluding. Now, after having given so many arguments, now the writer again gets back to the controlling idea and sums it up and says that tests give me a lot of stress that is why I don't like Tessie. He sums it up in simple way and takes us back to the topic sentence. So what now we get is that we come to know that a paragraph is made up of or arranged in three parts. Topic sentence, supporting details, closing or concluding sentence. Uh, apparently, it seems very easy to write a paragraph but it's not that easy. It's very technical. So if your paragraph is right, then your essay will automatically be right. Okay. Now, what is the hamburger paragraph? So can you see this diagram to the right side? Um, this is called the hamburger. Uh, it's like you eat different burgers, but this is the hamburger in which there are different layers. Now, um, we come to know that the paragraph hamburger is a writing organizer that visually outlines the key components of a paragraph. So
So it's just an example that um, the educationists they use just to give the idea that how your paragraph should look like. Uh, so they give it an ex um, they give it a kind of a of an image of a of a burger, and they say that that the top of the bun or this burger is the topic sentence, which is the main idea, top bun. Okay, within this burger, the supporting details are when you put inside it tomatoes, lettuce, meat, or any kind of thing uh, which is inside to um, um, enhance the flavor. Okay, it's the it's your choice. Uh, then you see that there is this colorful vocabulary which is part of supporting details in which you can put like different uh, kind of um, like ketchup or uh, some kind of sauce that you put into enhance the taste. Now concluding sentence is the bottom bun and we see that these two are the most important parts in the sense that without it the burger is not complete. Burger is going to complete when you add uh, supporting details, colorful vocabulary. Um, without these things, it will not become a burger. It will they will remain buns. So bun has to become a burger when you add the details of different types. But the thing is that without the top and bottom buns, you cannot make a burger. So it's a term used for visually um, uh, telling. Uh, the students that how your paragraph should look like right so this is how you need to remember now there is a formula it's a kind of formula you can say that what makes up a paragraph topic sentence means ts plus uh, supporting sentences or supporting details they, it means the same supporting details plus uh, concluding or closing sentence so together all of this it makes up a paragraph I hope it is clear now. Uh, quickly we get to the elements of a paragraph that without which paragraph is not complete. Paragraph must have four elements uh, to make it a good paragraph. Uh, it must have a unity. Uh, unity means over here that it should be about one topic. You have to deal with one point uh, in paragraph. If you are talking about the importance of Mm, uh, mobile phone then it should not talk about importance of newspaper over there it has to be about mobile phone okay and of or about its importance there you do not have to talk negative about it all right there is another thing which is called coherence coherence is uh, it is the sentences uh, which should be connected to each other interconnected sentences make up a paragraph then there has to be a proper chronological in order of the things. Uh, if you, for example, make uh, some, uh, some dish and you have to write a paragraph about it, uh, you have to tell somebody about it in a paragraph form, then of course you have to tell first thing first, then second thing, then third thing. You can't say uh, that the last thing first, then the second last, then no. Um, if you are making a pizza, then you have to first say that first you have to knead the dough. You have to make the dough for pizza. Then you have to do this. Then this. See? So there has to be an order which should be related to the steps that you are doing in that paragraph. That order can be uh, date-wise or step-wise order or it can be order of importance. That the most important thing has to be given uh, in the first place, then second is second important, and then finally you go to the least important, right? And completeness, as you already know, that this is one of the uh, principles of uh, communication that you have to complete uh, whatever you write, whatever sentences, or whatever information you want to give, it has to be uh, complete and uh, sentences should be clear. Uh, they should support the main idea and of course they should sum up. So completeness means over here that you have to arrange them in such a way that they give a complete picture of something.
um i will uh, separately deal with this topic but at the moment i can tell you that there are some uh, transitional devices that we use when we write paragraphs essays or anything which is interrelated in thought um now these transitional devices they are actually the words or phrases that help carry a thought from one sentence to another from one idea to another or from one paragraph to another and finally transitional devices link now this is important line link sentences and paragraphs together smoothly so that there are no abrupt jumps or breaks between ideas so the words like finally further immediately thereafter moreover similarly um uh, for example there are so so many transitional devices uh, they are those connectors that you use uh to uh to give the coherence you can say or to achieve unity in your uh, essay your paragraph or any writing that you do any continuous writing so this is just an example i can, i am not going to read the paragraph but in bold letters i can tell you that all these are the connectors or the transitional devices and they play an important role to connect the first sentence with the second the second with the third the third with the fourth and so on and they also connect paragraph one paragraph with the other paragraph so i told you that i'm going to give you a separate uh, lecture on transitional devices under the heading of coherence and cohesion so wait for that uh now let's get to the last part of our topic and that is types of a paragraph how many types are there of a paragraph okay there are four uh, types of a paragraph in which one is called descriptive now descriptive paragraphs as the name tells us it did they describe something describe uh, i'll give you the detail description means that when you give an image of something as if the other person is seeing it or other person uh, can get the clear idea narrative pertains to a story so there are some paragraphs in which you tell some kind of uh, account or some uh, incident that has happened uh, so when you do this it means that paragraph is narrative uh, right uh, then expository expository paragraph is the one expose means to show expository is that paragraph which shows or explains something or gives information or instructions so mostly in your papers um, uh, in especially the science students they mostly write the expository paragraphs um then we have persuasive persuasive as the name tells us it means to convince the other now when the writer tries to convince the readers about his or her opinion um and then it it will become a persuasive paragraph now one by one i'm going to quickly take you through the examples now the first is descriptive now look at this paragraph uh, you should read this uh, uh, when i finish um, doing the lecture so you have to read this and you will get to know that over here uh, the whosoever is the person who is relaxing at the beach gives us the whole picture of the beach that how it looks how uh, how that person feels uh, what is the scenery around uh, why it makes him so why it is so soothing see so this is what he tells us and we see that any that that paragraph which is descriptive it describes or gives a clear picture of a person event place or a thing and how uh, that description is made it is through our senses like this hearing tasting touching smell so all these senses when you uh, through using these you explain or you write something as if the other person who is reading this paragraph also uh, feels the same it means that you have described it well see and uh, this descriptive paragraph it provides detailed information about the topic and due to this description the reader can create a mental image now in the pic the picture comes clear in the mind and that person seems to have uh, go, uh, have experienced the same thing so that is called the descriptive paragraph now uh, it is easy uh, narrative paragraph is about 
any incident that you relate for example uh, you narrate and that is yesterday evening i got home from school and around four o'clock my mother had dinner prepared and you see some uh, incident is being narrated over here being told so it's a kind of story that the other person tells any any kind of anecdote incident happening so when you tell that in the paragraph form it means it is a narrative paragraph expository paragraph expository for example this paragraph it is about stress what is stress so anything that you explain about this mental condition uh, all of it is going to be an expository paragraph see you can read it yourself because uh, it's unnecessary to read it over here but this whole paragraph is about uh, what is stress uh, what is stress and uh, how it harms uh, the people and especially the teenagers and um, mostly it talks about the teenagers okay and this is persuasive or convincing essay it's a very short one that i have selected for example uh, in this essay it starts from the dolphins are very smart animals now this is the point the writer makes so the difference over here is from the previous uh, types in persuasive essay writer has an opinion and then he defends his opinion and convinces the readers that he's right so the first line like the main idea it tells us that dolphins are very smart animals and rest of it he is going to explain how gives us the proof uh, uh, and he is going to tell us that multiple studies found that dolphins worked in tandem with humans to catch prey very few if any species have developed mutually symbiotic relationships with humans now here it's a kind of an evidence this is the point the person makes and this is the evidence and then we get to know that if we agree we say okay dolphins are very smart animals all right another paragraph i have just put over here it is of your interest probably that school uniforms should be mandatory for all students for a number of reasons now this is the main idea and rest of it is going to be the uh, supporting details but this is how the writer tries to convince the readers about uh, school uniform should be compulsory for all students and then he gives reasons and then he gets to the conclusion that many people might say that uniforms take away from personal freedom but i believe see i believe it's a personal opinion that the benefits are stronger than the drawbacks uh, let me tell you that in descriptive paragraphs uh, mostly uh, what there are two types of descriptions personal or uh, subjective or the objective uh, for example when you go to your classroom and if somebody asks you to describe your classroom and you say that uh, it has six uh, uh, it has a door uh, then uh, you go inside and then uh, there are uh, there is one white board in the middle and then there are 50 chairs one rostrum of brown color uh, or wooden rostrum six fans 12 lights uh, it is rectangular whatever you say this is called objective description because these things uh, can not be uh, uh, contradicted or objected to by the other person they are there they uh, there are six fans nobody is going to deny it but in subjective descriptions when you say that my classroom is a, a very airy place it's the place i like the most now this is where you are actually going towards your personal now description what it appeals to you what it is to you so that is the description but in persuasive essay you make up a point for example you say that homework should not be given to students now this is your point of view and now you have to convince now this is the main idea now you have to convince the readers by writing a paragraph and towards the end you conclude now this will be a persuasive paragraph okay so we will do many uh, examples in practice but here I'm just trying to give you a concept uh, about these types of paragraphs. Now, what is the home task? As you know that uh, home task is important for practicing whatever we have learnt during the session. So here we are going to see that there is a picture of the hamburger paragraph. Remember, like this is called the uh, paragraph organizer. All right. So what you need to do is see the left side that you have to draw this 
this picture all of it as it is as it is you have to draw this uh, in your registers and write topic sentence supporting sentences or, or uh, it is also called uh, supporting details and closing or uh, concluding sentence of all four paragraphs given on the slides i have given you examples of four paragraphs like descriptive expository um narrative and the final one that is persuasive now these four paragraphs uh, there are five six paragraphs but you have to choose these four paragraphs and then you have to make this uh, picture you have to draw this picture or diagram uh, with every paragraph and then you have to write uh, where what is the topic sentence see in this particular paragraph then what will be the supporting detail supporting detail number 1 supporting detail number 2 3 and finally concluding sentence uh, probably in some paragraphs there can be only two supporting details so it's up to you okay supporting details can be two supporting details can be three so this is how uh, when uh, paragraph is taught to the uh, young children then they are told that there should be five sentences in a paragraph one sentence the first one should be main uh, topic or which should have controlling idea next three sentences should be supporting details and last sentence should be concluding so when you teach a paragraph to a young child or to a young one in initial classes they are asked to write five sentences but you are at uh the undergraduate level um, so you may write 7 8 9 10 10 10 not more than 10 line paragraph okay so it's up to you people but here you don't have to write anything except that you have to draw the given picture in your registers and then choose those paragraphs uh, out of those 5 6 you have to take any four paragraphs and you have to uh, write over here their parts that in this uh, this is what the key uh, that the topic sentence is these are the supporting details and these are the concluding ones and still if you don't understand do ask me the question uh, any time uh, in the group so for time being um, let me get to the objectives of the session whether they were achieved or not let's see uh, do we know now what is the structural grammatical hierarchy of language yes now it starts from the morpheme like how can uh, there be uh, the how can we divide or you can say how can there be different levels of grammatical um, hierarchy or the system in english language that we know then what is a paragraph that is also uh, we have just come to know that it is a basic unit of thought and it is the group of interrelated sentences which talk about one idea then structure organization or parts of a paragraph yes we also uh, discussed that in hamburger uh, technique that we used over there elements of a paragraph those four elements of unity uh, coherence uh, order and uh, the last one uh, that we had done over there uh, that is completeness uh, now all of it is going to uh, they make up elements of a paragraph Uh, then we talked about those four types of paragraph uh, that is descriptive narrative expository and persuasive so it means that we have achieved our objectives of today's session thank you for watching and listening so coming up next will be paragraph writing but we are going to talk cohesion and coherence the two most important c's that we are going to talk so see you until then stay blessed allah hafiz